everybody, it's Susan Hill here, and uh, I want to ask you something. Do you have a hard time walking your dog on a leash? Hey, if you're like most people, you're certainly not alone, because I would say 9 out of 10 people have a really, really hard time walking their dogs. In fact, I think most people don't even walk their dogs because they have such a difficult time. Now, is this you? Are you somebody that has a big, powerful dog that pulls you down the street? Almost feels like you're going to be pulled over. Or maybe you've tripped and fallen and like broken open your knee. Or uh, you feel like uh, you're, you're just totally out of control. And every time you walk your dog, it's so uh, frustrating. Uh, maybe you're airborne. Uh, do you feel like you're a rag doll on walks? That you're just being completely lifted off the ground? Your dog is so strong and powerful. Hey, this happened to me a few times with my Dobermans. It wasn't pretty. Now, in this video, this dog knows all his commands, yet his uh, dog parents really can't control him. Now, look at this nice lady, Debbie McDaniel. Now, she's, she's going to get him to sit. That's Thor. She gives him a pet on the head. And, uh, but he turns around, he, there he sees another dog, and he just wants to go see that dog. And he can't because he's restricted by the leash. So he's bucking, he's pulling, he's out of control, and bango, wax daddy right in the knee. And that really hurts, let me tell you. So they make uh, old Thor sit down, force him to sit, and uh, he's not going to have any part of it because there's that dog again, and he wants to go see that dog. And let me tell you something, Thor is uh, about 100 pounds. He's a big Doberman. But when you got a big, powerful dog trying to force him to sit, it isn't always the best solution. Clearly, they need help. Can you relate to this? Maybe your dog has leash aggression. Uh, this Doberman did, and uh, he was biting his uh, dog parents in the leg, and they actually thought about giving him up. Uh, not fun. I've had this happen myself with a few of my dogs. That's how I, uh, I learned about leash aggression. And clearly, clearly, a lot of people do suffer from this. Is your dog a stubborn or a timid dog, uh, refusing to go on walks, not enjoying walks, uh, um, causing you uh, aggravation because he just won't won't move forward. Uh, this is frustrating too. Is this you? Uh, I, I haven't had a dog like this personally, but I know a lot of people who have and they are very frustrated. Now look at these people. They're having a grand time walking on the beach. The lady, her daughter, and the, and the golden retriever type dog. And uh, this could be you, but it isn't more than likely or you wouldn't be watching this video, right? So what's missing? Uh, why can't you figure it out? Uh, why is this whole process of walking your dog so darn hard? What, what is it? What's the secret to it? Well, how do dogs think? I mean, what's going through your dog's mind? Uh, clearly, uh, obedience training doesn't always work for all dogs. So what's the issue? What's the problem? Hmm. Let's scratch our heads a bit. Well, so tell you what, to better serve you guys, to help you guys uh, move through this whole walking dogs issue, I have a gift for you. It's the holiday season, so I thought I would give this to you guys as a special holiday gift just to help you out. So I have this video I made called Walking Dogs Demystified, and I thought I'd gift you the first part of the video to help you out, to help you uh, with this whole issue of how to walk dogs. So it's about 11 minutes long and uh, you can go ahead and watch it. Okay? So here we go. So we're driving to this guy's house right now to help him with his two dogs because he can't walk very well and he needs to learn how to exercise his dogs. So we're going to teach him some things today. me not being able to exercise my dogs and my dogs like nudge the, the screen open and then they take off and they take their own walks 
And then, you know, it's like they come back, but it's like, you know, they could be hit by a car. Luckily, they're trained. So how can I help you today, David? Well, Susan, thanks for coming. Um, I've been really having problems with my dogs and exercising them. Um, because of my leg and everything, it's been really hard for me to be consistent on a daily basis, and my dogs seem to have gained some weight. Um, Reagan, the female, is 99 pounds, and Kobe's 89 pounds, and I think they're about 10 to 12 to 15 pounds overweight. So I really need some op, you know, alternatives to exercise if you have them on how I can, number one, get my male swimming because the female is fine in the water, but the male just won't have anything to do with it. And then number two, if you have any other options that I can myself exercise the dogs because I really feel like I've let them down as far as with my mobility, it's kind of affecting their weight and their mobility. So do you have a bike? I have a bike. So I'm going to suggest that I'll teach your male dog, Kobe, how to swim. Okay. And then I'm going to teach you how to ride your bike so you can get some exercise at the same time your dogs get some exercise. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'd like to learn. Cool. That. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. You don't do it if she'll beg you. So you see her begging for the affection. I know, I know. Yeah. So what your dogs just did? Stay. Nuzzling you, like yeah. right there. Okay. You don't want to give in and give them the reward of petting them. So you, you want to tell them no. No. Because what's happening is. They're actually training you no. to give them what they want. No. So they're actually controlling you. Okay. So when you get into a situation where they take off up the street, they're not going to listen to you when you try to calm back. So that's a very subtle thing. And it's very common for a lot of people who have dogs. All right. That their dogs will demand affection, especially the females. Demanding yeah, females. Yeah, <laughs> my female wants more affection than anything. She's always pawing at me for it. So you want to not give it to her. You only want to give her the affection as a training um, mechanism when she comes to you. Okay. But what happens is, is that we, we start to go unconscious a little bit. Like if we're watching TV or something and our dog comes up to us and nuzzles for the affection. And then we just automatically start petting them because we're not really being conscious about what we're doing. I see. So it's important for you to just kind of be more aware that when your dogs demand affection from you, you say no, and then you have them do something that you want, and then you give the reward of affection. It's a way to train them to have more control over them versus them have control so you're like, over you. you're setting a boundary for them? Yeah, yeah, okay. sure. Rules, having some rules. rules. Just like boundaries. little kids, you need rules for animals as well. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. So yeah, so Kobe's like the real skittish one, and kind of like the baby and just kind of like the one that doesn't really, it's very cowery. Yeah. And Reagan, Reagan just like, she'll do whatever. She has no fear. She's the alpha. So what do okay. we do? How well, do we I would say we start training this dog okay. to do the bike and then this dog will follow along more than likely. Absolutely. Yeah. This she follows. She, well, he she follows looks, and she's the leader. He looks right. up to her, right? Absolutely. Perfect. That's his, so that's his girl. what you okay? So what you want to remember when you're riding the bike is, um, I think it's the safest way is to attach the leash to your bike itself rather than hold it in your hand, okay. because it becomes difficult and challenging to try to navigate and steer the bike and use the brakes okay. and shift with all your hands if you only have one hand and it's holding onto the leash. All so right. this way you have two hands on the bike for safety purposes, and the dog is attached to the bike itself. All right. Thanks. Okay, and um, I got the leash. you just want to make sure your your dogs aren't reactive, right? Meaning they're not going to like run after a squirrel or a bunny or a cat. Sometimes. Sometimes, but you know they're mostly you know they don't really care about other animals. I mean they love cats, but only if the cat's like around their their domain. I mean, they see a cat, they're going to chase it pretty much. So it, it sounds like you have easy dogs. Yeah, they're pretty easy. For the most part, compared to other people's dogs. Yeah. So that's a big bonus for you. Okay. Yeah. So um, I would make sure that the leash itself, um, you want to pull, push this tab all the way down so your dog can't escape. Because see how loose that is? It'll okay. open up. You don't want your dog to get away. Okay. Uh oh, this isn't going to work. Well, we can attach it to the collar here. We'll just put it through the collar. Okay. And that way it's secure. Got it. All right? 
great. So we're going to attach that to the bike. Okay, I got I'll the get, bike over here. Yeah, I'll get my bike and we'll actually ride together. Okay. Kobe. She doesn't want to go. Come here, Kobe. Kobe. Easy, gentle. Look. Turn it around. Make sure the ears are through. We got a lot of hair. I'm going right. to tighten it up. Okay? Okay. And then what you're going to do. Are we on the bike? Yeah. Okay. You can kind of hold the leash a little bit at first. So you can start off slow. Don't let the dog get in front of you. You can use your front wheel as a blocking mechanism. See? Uh -huh. So if the dog starts to come, or you can use your leg, which I often do. Okay. And, um, but you want to keep your bike, your hands at all times on your brakes, okay. just in case you need to stop. Okay. Okay, let's go. Reagan, come on. Come on, Kobe. Reagan. Kobe, let's try it. <laughs> oh, shoot. Whoa. It was fun. Oh my god, like that was like the most exercise I've had in five years. It's <laughs> awesome. I that was up. great. And my, my, uh, my mail was really good. Oh, we got a dog. Hey, um, Reagan, I noticed, she stops. She yeah, kind of doesn't want to exercise. She, she's she's like, kind of like stubborn. She's stubborn. Yeah. yeah. She's the alpha, like I said. Yeah. So. so what do we do in that case? You kind of got to just, you know, kind of I'm going to use the word force her, but just be very commanding and tell her, no, we're going, let's go. Because she needs the exercise. I know that if I took this one on the bike and that one would follow, definitely, but I don't know, like the rules and everything of the road, I don't want to get hit by a car or get, you know, a yeah. citation, because I guess you got to have them on a leash here. You should have them on a leash for safety, but this road is pretty mellow here. Okay. Yeah. You shouldn't have any problems. Because I think both dogs would kind of throw me off balance, right? <laughs> It'd be, it'd be, it would be a good thing to have two dogs on the bike probably because it'd be, it, it would be, your balance would be off and you'd be like dealing with two dogs. You could, uh, but however, because you have, you know, the leg issue, you may want to just do one at a time at first anyway. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. That, this is awesome. All right, I, David. I'm going to feel like a lot healthier now because I have a way to do both all of us together. So yeah. thank you. So let's teach this one to swim. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Try it again. Come on, Kobe. 
Oh my God, Susan, thank you so much. I mean, I, I, I'm blown away that you're able to do so much in just the short time that you've been here. It's great. So listen, keep up the good work with the dogs. Keep exercising and keep working with the dogs and you're gonna see a huge shift in your life. Wow, that's really great. I really appreciate it. And I just, what you've been a good little accomplished in the last few, you know, hour or so, it's been great. Thank yeah. you, Susan. Let's have a hug. All right, thanks. So if you wanna be a real leader with dignity, strength, and courage. Go ahead and click on the link below and get the rest of the video to start 2017 off onto the right foot.